in the previous video, we learned about uh, MEMS uh, gyros and some of the applications that you uh, find them in. We also learned a little bit about the physics of these uh, MEMS gyros and I talked about uh, Coriolis force and we learned about this uh, tuning fork uh, based design uh, of the MEMS gyro which leveraged this uh, Coriolis uh, force. So in this video, I want to talk about two examples of uh, these uh, MEMSpace uh, gyroscopes. The very first example I have is this uh, gyroscope which was developed by the Draper Laboratories uh, in the early 1990s, I think it was 1993. And this was the very first uh, MEMS gyroscope and it uh, leveraged this uh, tuning uh, fork uh, design. And it consists of these uh, two vibrating uh, proof masses which are vibrating along uh, this axis, the X axis, uh, in uh, with equal velocity in magnitude but opposite uh, in direction, okay? So now if uh, this uh, gyroscope is, uh, let's say, you know, it's subjected to a rotation like this which results in a angular velocity vector along the y direction, okay? So now this would result in a Coriolis force acting upon uh, these uh, two proof masses which uh, as we discussed uh, in the previous video is uh, given by uh, this formula where it's proportional to two times the mass and it's given as a cross product of my velocity with my angular velocity. So a good way to remember the direction of this uh, Coriolis force is to uh, think about this uh, rule of thumb, this right hand uh, rule, where if you have uh, the cross product of two vectors, you rotate your uh, fingers from the first vector, which is the velocity vector, towards your second vector, which is your angular velocity vector, and then the direction of uh, your thumb gives you the direction of the resultant vector, which is the Coriolis force in this case. So now we can apply this uh, rule of, uh, you know, this rule over here. And if I take this particular case and rotate my finger from uh, using my right thumb, rotate my finger from my, uh, from my velocity vectors towards my angular velocity vector, it would give me a Coriolis force, which is going to trying to drown this uh, proof mass into the plane. Similarly, if I do it for the second proof mass, which is going in the opposite direction, if I again rotate my finger from this uh, pink arrow towards my yellow arrow, that would give me a resultant vector of the Coriolis force, which is trying to lift this proof mass out of the plane. So now what I can do is I can uh, measure a capacitor with the top plate being this uh, proof mass and the bottom plate uh, located below this proof mass. So I'll have two of uh, these uh, capacitor with the top plate consisting of the uh, vibrating mass and the bottom plate of this capacitor located uh, below it. So now the Coriolis force on the first mass is trying to drown it while on the other one it's trying to lift it and I can measure the change in capacitance between uh, these two capacitors and that would give me a sense uh, of my angular velocity and I can uh, calculate my rate of rotation using that, okay? So the second example I have uh, for you is a more uh, recent one. And uh, this is in fact the gyroscope which goes inside uh, uh, one of the iPhones. This is a ST microelectronic uh, based uh, gyroscope found uh, inside uh, an iPhone. And uh, what it consists over here is uh, it consists of four of these uh, proof masses. So I can see four of uh, these uh, proof masses. One is this one, the second one is over here. The third one is over here and uh, fourth one is over here and 
it's able to use these four proof masses to measure the angular rotation along all the three axes. So if you are surprised, you know, you are not the only one uh, because I told you in the previous example, we were using two of these uh, proof masses to detect uh, angular rotation along one of our axes. So how come this uh, this particular gyroscope is just using four of these proof masses and able, it's able to detect angular rotation along all the three axes? So I'll explain how it's using a very uh, clever design and I'll explain how it works. Let's go step by step and try to understand how it's measuring the pitch, roll and yaw. So let's first look at uh, pitch, which is measured by these two vibrating uh, proof masses. And they are vibrating along this direction. So this one is, if it's going this way, the other one will be going this way. And if it's uh, subjected to an angular rotation along the x-axis, so if it's uh, rotated uh, this way, which would correspond to uh, pitch so it's uh, measuring that by a Coriolis force which would be acting upon this first proof mass and trying to drown it just as we uh, saw in the previous case we will rotate our fingers from this pink vector towards the yellow vector and the direction of my right thumb gives me the direction of this uh, Coriolis force and that same force on the other proof mass will try to lift it up. And again, by using uh, this uh, proof mass as the top plate of my capacitor and the bottom plate uh, located uh, below it, I can sense uh, my angular rotation along the x-axis or I can sense the pitch, okay? Now, these two proof masses are vibrating along along the along these axes okay so again this one if it's going this way it, the other one is going the opposite way so now let's think about uh, roll so again roll meaning i have uh, angular rotation along this particular axis okay and that would result again in a coriolis force which will try to drown this uh, proof mass and we'll try to uplift this proof mass. And again, by sensing the change in capacitance using this proof mass as the top electrode and the bottom electrode of the capacitor located below it, I can measure the roll. Okay, so I'm done with pitch and I'm done with the roll. Now let's think about yaw, which would correspond to a rotation like this, which would result in a angular velocity which is the vector which is located along the z-axis over here. So now what if the same proof mass is uh, subjected to this yaw vector? So let me erase the previous uh, example. Okay, so let me erase these two things and then I can think about what happens if it's subjected to a rotation like this, okay? So now if it's uh, subjected to a yaw, that would result in, that would result in a angular velocity located uh, like this, okay? And uh, these two masses are vibrating like this. So this would result in a force which is in the plane of, these, uh, it, of this uh, proof mass and in this particular case, it would result in the proof mass being deflected this way. And in the other case, the proof mass being deflected this way. And this is measured by these uh, comb-like structures, very similar to the ones which are in the case of uh, accelerometers, by using these uh, fins which are attached to this uh, proof mass and these uh, fixed plates which are located adjacent to these uh, fins and by uh, sensing again the change in uh, capacitance and uh, taking a delta between this finger and the finger located on the other proof mass we can also measure using the same proof mass 
the yaw as well okay so I'm uh, kind of uh, you know I'm kind of uh, making uh, multiple use of uh, these two proof masses and uh, I'm uh, multitasking them and I'm using them both to measure the roll as well as to measure the yaw so I showed you the cross section uh, along uh, uh, the top as well and this is the cross section how it looks uh, from the top the top picture of this uh, gyroscope so again you can see the four proof masses so this one is for measuring these two are used to measure the pitch and then the other two over here they are uh, multiplexed and they're used for both measuring the roll and they're used for measuring the yaw as well using these uh, sense fingers that uh, are located uh, at the edge over here okay and one more thing that we need over here is of course the drive circuitry which uh, drives these uh, capacitors uh, plates which drives these uh, proof masses uh, into uh, resonance such that they move and vibrate confined in one particular axis but uh, and also in equal uh, magnitude of velocity but op opposite direction okay so if you further take apart uh, these uh, top electrodes and look at the bottom plate so i'm looking at the bottom plate of the capacitor and it again consists of uh, these uh, bottom electrodes uh, which sit beneath those uh, proof mass and they help in measuring both the pitch and the roll okay so i hope you now have a good understanding of uh, how a mems gyroscope uh, works and we also have seen how a three axis uh, gyroscope is implemented uh, using a tuning fork design Note that this is not the only design. There are several other uh, designs in the market. Some of them use a vibrating disc. Some of them uh, use a vibrating uh, cantilever. Some of them use a vibrating uh, ring. And all of these are ways you know you can measure the angular velocity. The guiding principle, of course, is the uh, Coriolis force and uh, you have enough basis to understand these other design as well now.